Uh, ignore the fact that uh, Valentine's Day was like a while ago. Uh, <laughs> that I'm running out of running running out of out of, out of cute girl outfits to wear in these holiday episodes. What you're seeing is the remnants of a clay figure dubbed Adonis von Schernitz. Shortly after the discovery of this statue, a second was found depicting a female figure bent over. These are dated to be 7,200 years old, or 5,000 years BC, making it the oldest depiction of pornography known to science. Surprisingly, sex existed long before humans did. I know. Despite the many taboos around it that have existed in many cultures for thousands of years, sex is kind of a weird open secret to many, but on this channel, it's all you're here for. It is kind of strange though, isn't it? I mean, most people have a sexual desire, like we have desires for comfort or nourishment or emotional fulfillment, and despite the fact that we have means to satisfy all those other things, pornography is looked down upon and relegated to being this shady, seedy business. Unless you're into anime, in which case porn is an obnoxiously central part of your personality. You know who you are. I think we should change that. I think in this age of silicon and silicone, we should embrace our opportunity to explore sexuality in new, groundbreaking ways, like... Porn-tress. Jesus. Okay, uh, what about sex tris. How many of these were there? All right, all right. Uh, let's try something a little classier. This is just throwing nudity in my face. I want something a little more intellectual, like A Night with Troy from 1991, an X-rated evening of fun with Counselor Troy from Star Trek The Next Generation. Sexual acts are described based on your state of dress or undress in combination with blah, blah, blah. This is then applied to her current position. So, for example, you can't... <laughs> But <laughs> she's standing here. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, undress Troy. Four is Troy. Let's go. Being an empath. God damn it! It's always, it's always, it's always just empath types. They never, they never want. Oh, I'm. I can feel the. Uh, they never want. They never want to do it. All right. All right. By their very nature, uh, porn games are going to be lower budget affairs, uh, probably cheaply made. So it's difficult to really find the top of the pile so let's find the bottom what's up make love Free Spirit Software was founded around 1988 by a man named Joe Hubbard their library of games include Barney Bear Meets Santa Claus, Adventures in Math, Barney Bear Goes to School, Sex Vixens from Space. Yeah, Free Spirit just kind of did whatever, like a free spirit. If you heard of Sex Vixens from Space back in the day, it was probably because of a story run in the January 1989 issue of Info Magazine. 75 copies of Free Spirit Software's Amiga game, Sex Vixens from Space, were confiscated and destroyed by British customs officers to, quote, protect the youth of today. The distributor who was importing the product called it a brutal fascist regime stopping simple software coming in. Now, whether or not this is a true story remains to be seen, but probably never will be. It's not out of the question that this was an attempt to drum up some controversy. Fun fact, the fascism accusations made here are seen by anthropologists as a prehistoric example of internet discourse. In a 1989 interview with Amiga Resource, Hubbard made some bold claims. Quote, If you want to have a great game, you've got to deliver a good game experience. Some Amiga games get by on graphics alone. This will become horribly ironic in about three, two, one. Oh. You are Captain Brad Stallion, owner and operator of the one-man space vehicle known throughout the galaxy as Big Thruster. 
For years, there have been rumors about the Tribe, a colony of beautiful, sex-starved women somewhere in space. According to many legends, they suddenly appear, raid the male-dominated rural planetary systems with their sex ray gun, leaving the men sexless eunuchs. The Federated Government has hired you to find and stop them. I am painfully aware of the fact that if the genders were swapped here, this would not be a lighthearted sex comedy. Alright, let's start the game. I said start the game. How do you how do I get past the intro? Okay, I've been here for like five minutes. I can't figure it out. Uh, let's consult game facts. The game has many spelling mistakes, and I have chosen not to correct them for the guide. Awesome, that's exactly what I want to see in the first paragraph of a walkthrough. Very reassuring. Alright, looks like you need to type space to begin the actual game. Why? I don't know. Okay, looks like we're in the hallway of the ship. Uh, let's check out the control panel. After I sit down in the chair of control room, I get a message telling me where I need to go next. Federated Planet One, where a waitress named Lila has some information on the sex fixins. So, uh, how do I take off? Maybe I can uh, pull a lever? No. Uh, push a button? No. Let's inspect the control panel closer. Ah. It's the exact same description. Okay. Uh, I'm really racking my brain here. How am I supposed to start the ship? Oh, of course! You type blast off. How could I have been so stupid? It's the most intuitive action. I mean, we've all blasted off at our control panels, haven't we? That was not supposed to sound like that. Before we disembark, why don't we have a look around the ship? Ooh, what's this sultry poster in Brad's cabin? You're in your captain's cabin to the west of the- oh, alright. Can't interact with it. Uh, let's check the cargo hold, filled with the priceless aphrodisiac orgasium. Hmm, maybe something like that would come in handy on a mission like this. I'll take a crate of it. Orgasium fills the air and you die. Cool. Alright, let's start this over again. Get to the chair, sit down, read the message, blast off. What? Standing up. I... I sat down. That's what prompted the message in the first place, didn't it? What did I do wrong? What's stopping me from using the navigation computer? Okay, gonna make sure that I'm firmly seated this time. What? Okay, here's what's supposed to happen. You enter the control panel, which I can't believe they didn't call the cockpit. Uh, whatever action you take next will trigger the message for your mission. Before you blast off, you need to sit in the chair and have pushed the button. Which button? Why? Who knows? It's not detailed in the description of the room, you cannot inspect the panel closer, and if you enter push button, you'll be told that you can't do that. The game literally lies and tells you that the button you need to progress doesn't exist to push. Now that we understand the first of this game's lies, we can blast off to our destination, Federated Planet One. Now we come to a grav car we need to get to the hotel but the car has no visible controls. What you're supposed to do is get out your pay card and insert it. But insert it where? There's clearly things here, but I'm not allowed to get any more information than what I'm told. I don't know why the pay card works on this vehicle. Is it like a self-driving taxi? After checking in at the desk, we arrive at the room. Obviously, the first thing of note is the computer, so let's log on. Oh, uh, do I need to use my card again? Nope. What you're actually supposed to do is write turn on terminal and then command it to send Lila. Now, let's take a moment to think about how a good game would do this. Some people might find that a rude thing to do. Uh, I don't care. After stepping into the room, you get a general description of all the items in it. Let's ignore the fact that there's a visible phone you might assume would be to call Lila up. At this point, I might try to use the computer and be told that it's turned off. I can then inspect it closer, and the game will describe it in more detail, including something like an on switch. I can press or flick or whatever it to turn the machine on, and then be presented with several options. 
The most crucial is the one to call up a staff member, but this is also a good opportunity to flesh out the world. Maybe I can read about the weird, sexy sci-fi events going on at the hotel, or skim through satirical advertisements, just anything to give it some life, just some personality. Instead, you turn on computer and send Lila. So she arrives- oh! God! She looks like she was caught in an explosion in a mustard factory. Jesus! This is our first sex scene? Is she talking about your ship or your... Uh, funny? Her eyes. Oh my god, look at her eyes. Those are the eyes of the devil. This feels like it's gonna turn into the first scene of Berserk. Well, let's get to it. Derivative of the German... Ah, uh, okay. Are you plowing something here? Uh, what does it look like? So, the only command that works for sex is make love. Brad Stallion doesn't fuck. He makes love. You need to talk to her afterwards to get information about the whereabouts of the titular sex vixens. You leave, but not before picking up an instant woman capsule from the bathroom. Apparently, they've been trading supplies with a man on Space Station X. These are some neat looking robots. Can't interact with them. Over here, nothing to do. Over here, some food to eat, and the only other thing to exist in this whole location, the station commander, a man whose face is never shown and name is never given. I genuinely think that the artist couldn't draw faces and was just relying on photo traces of some models for the women. Anyway, uh, I don't know what to do here. I can't talk to him, can't attack him. Oh, but I can hit him and I die. Great. Time to start over, or not, because I'm back on the space station. Huh. So even if I can't figure out how to save, at least there's some kind of a checkpoint system in place. That's alright. Now, I don't feel like much more trial and error, so I'm just gonna check the guide. Looks like I need to give him the instant woman capsule. Huh. There's no real indication that he would be bribed by that. No information I could gather to help me figure that out, but... Whatever. Huh, uh, looks like I can't get the capsule from my pocket. Maybe I just need to give it to him straight up? The right idea? What? Well, if I check my inventory, I'll... What? The capsule's gone! It's not there! All I have is the card from the start of the game! It was at this point that the true horror dawned on me. This game does feature checkpoints, but it does not save your inventory. And because your next destination is put in automatically when you get the proper information, there is no way to go back to the hotel. Blasting off, strands you in space, and kills you. I am officially soft-locked. Oh, that's not a good sign. Finally, we're back to the commander, we give him the capsule, and he tells us where the Amazon planet is. Alright, uh, Mondo, the, uh... The sky looks lovely. Yet, oh, we're confronted by the Amazons, and they're... Blue? Now, what would a rational person do here? Yes, you're right. Undress. Much like in real life, public stripping actually spares you from execution and just nets you a sentence. <laughs> Someone should have told this wow. guy. Like all great literature, the game has no dialogue, but tells you that this woman, who was in the same accident as Lilu apparently, knows a way out. Of course, in order to find out, you need to have sex with her and then ask. You can't talk, just ask. They're very different, I'll have you know. Once you escape down a secret passage, which she has for some reason not used to escape herself, you're presented with this nightmarish control panel for a sex ray gun. I wasn't expecting gay and bisexual representation here, and I wonder if they even want it from this game. What is simple herpes? What is complex herpes? In order to advance here, you can't just turn it on or off or even use any of the functions on the panel. You need to push green, and push red. Because of course. Oh drats, the guards have surrounded you, what can you do? Uh, go west of course, because even though the indicator at the bottom says you can't go anywhere, you need to go west because that makes them fall for your charms? 
West is the most charming direction. Now I'm with the Queen, okay, who's heard a lot about my big thruster. Ah, <laughs> funny. After sex, she takes out the sex ray gun, which will apparently give her the most powerful orgasm in the galaxy. But because you hit some buttons, it explodes? And also other stored explosives explode? Why? Okay, the escaped attempt should be pretty easy. Just hop up into one of these sky bikes. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, let's just catch up to... I'm dead? When I tried to have sex with the prisoner, I died because I didn't eat. Because even though I ate on the space station, that wasn't saved when I was reloaded to the checkpoint. <sighs> okay, I took the capsule, I ate, I gave the capsule, I'm on the planet, I banged the prisoner, I banged the queen, I'm at the bikes. What was I supposed to do instead of going up? Which was the same command I used to get on the grav car. What am I supposed to do? Ride bike. Oh, hey, look, Sheila's here. I guess she escaped from prison. Uh, time to have lots of sex with her bacon skin. There's no credits. There is not even an end screen. Amazing. Sex Vixens from Space is one of the closest things you will find to an objectively bad game. And I don't say that lightly. On a fundamental, technical level, it's broken. It's not tested. It relies on trial and error gameplay where death is around every corner in a game with a broken save system. The means of advancing are so specific to what the programmers intended that I have no idea how you would get through this game without some kind of external guide. This is before you even get to the real content of the game. Not counting movement commands, there are 14 unique verbs needed to complete the game. Of those, seven are used once. Half of this game's actions are only done once. This isn't a nitpick, it's a problem with the design. Even when you do basically the same action at a different point, you need to use a different verb? It teaches you things, then drops these basic rules for interacting with the world. And the world itself feels hollow and empty. You can't interact with anything on screen save for about three plot items? You can't even examine things closer for details. That, combined with the overly picky verbs, makes the whole experience feel very railroaded. It defeats the purpose of interactive fiction, because I can never truly get into the story that's being told as a participant. This sets the precedent for the rest of the series. Because they made four of these! Oh yeah, you see that runtime? We've got gas in the tank. Don't worry, we'll make this fast. This game actually has an intro. I wish it didn't. Oh my god! What's wrong with your face? The beaver? What the... what is that? The first thing you'll notice about Planet of Lust is the amount of reused graphics. Uh, the second thing you'll notice is the plot to stop the evil Dr. Dildo from destroying the planet Erotica with a big force field crusher. You will have to notice the plot, actually, because I couldn't figure out how the hell to get off this text dump, just like the first game. You're supposed to type lust? I don't know. Oh! Like from the title. That's why the last game you had to write space. That's, of, of course. Unlike the first game, you start in the control room, and you don't need to push a non-existent button to avoid death this time. No, instead you're given a choice of three locations. Uh, well, the space platform sounds like a station I need to go to at some point. Erotica is the planet we're trying to save. What's Arborea? Let's try Erotica first. Ah. Instant death. Cool. No, uh, despite no indication or prior mention of it, your real first destination is Arborea. Uh, you'll see. The backgrounds here are a mess. I can't even tell what I'm looking at. It's just MS Paint vomit. You have a few objectives here. Uh, none of them are explained to you. The first is to go one screen east and pick some fruit. 
Uh, but don't explore too much or you'll get lost forever and can't leave. The soft lock is built into the design. There's no way to restart unless you die, so my only choice is to close the entire emulator and navigate to this game in my DOS folder again. Side note, the DOSBox team are fucking clowns for not having shortcuts to reset the emulator or the current program. All you have is a quit shortcut, because apparently the X on the window isn't enough. Oh, but I get it. They're a small team, and it's a really hard feature to implement. I'm sure it would take a really long time. It's not like they've had 20 years. It's not like they've had literally my entire time on this earth almost to the day to implement that. Uh, anyway. As kind of a practical joke, the designers want you to go in an arbitrary direction to get to a cave. In this jungle where making too many wrong turns will end your run. Oh, that's the beaver. It's not even a... never mind. Get in the cave, there's a naked woman. Why? Get the vase. Why? Did the game even tell you that there was a vase? Or was this the one time you had to know that a purely visual item was interactable? Is she talking about the ship or your... Have sex with her, but make sure to eat the fruit you picked up or you won't have enough energy. She leads you into a hall and then in a direction to a pool. Which direction does she go in? What a stupid question. You're just supposed to know. Now you're at the pool of everlasting passion. What is its significance? So you fill the vase at the pool. Oh, and if you don't have the vase, you can't go back. Leaving the pool will get you lost. Again! If you take any actions other than fill vase, east, north, north, you will be softlocked. The game is so restrictive about this, it's unbelievable. It's like they expect you to read the script while you're playing. Which I am! Oh, by the way, if you put in a destination for a planet you're already on, the ship takes off and drifts through space aimlessly, killing you. It doesn't just say that you're already there, it just kills you. And because I'm either too stupid to figure out this game's save system, or it literally doesn't have one, I have to do all of that over again. It takes me less than three minutes to do everything, it's not a big deal. So now the only location left to go that won't kill me is the space station. Before you can even step out of the airlock, you're ambushed by Dildo. If you think this leads to an exciting prison break sequence, uh, you'll see. Inside Dildo's prison, which is somewhere, you find Princess Orgasma, who knows a way out through a secret passage. I'm starting to see a very convenient trope showing up in these games. She can't open the passage until you give her water, however, but fortunately, Dildo left you with all your items. This, of course, triggers a sex scene. Why did I need the water when I could have just banged her? Uh, the game needed a section to pad the playtime, and it would have been too similar to the first game. So you talk to her, and she leads you to Dildo's control room. We confront him, and I finally get to do a cool action hero-ish thing by punching him out and grabbing a lever. With the force field turned off, we flee the exploding space station. In fact, you're teleported directly to your ship's own controls? <laughs> Time to blast off. What? Huh? The heat of the explosion ignites the orgasm on my ship, and we still die? I took too long. <sighs> Here's what happened. This game has two endings. You just saw one, or didn't see it because it wasn't finished. There was never a proper flag programmed to trigger a victory. The guide goes into more depth about extra, unused writing in the code. Uh, regardless, the actual ending is achieved not by talking to her after sex, like every other sex scene in this game and the previous one. You're just supposed to put in any command except for talk, ask, or question. Because, of course. At this point, despite not talking, Dildo will show up and his men drag you into your own control room? And then you could just blast off? You're out of here. Good move. Wh what? I, I didn't even turn the force field off. I didn't, I didn't save Erotica. I didn't do anything. What even happened? 
In that Amiga resource interview, Hubbard mentions that while making sex vixens from space, they were inspired by the 1974 sex comedy Flesh Gordon, a parody of old Flash Gordon serials. Now, I haven't watched this movie, but just from the trailer, it's painfully apparent that these are night and day. You can see the phallic spaceship, which Brad Stallion clearly drew from, but check out the practical effects, the sets, the costumes. Look at these beautifully animated stop-motion creatures. The amount of skill, time, and resources it took to make, animate, and composite this big bug guy into a fight scene is more sheer effort than was put into either of these games. Planet of Lust needs four unique verbs to beat, and you use non-movement verbs nine times. Released the same year as Planet of Lust is 1989's Bride of the Robot. Now, I've been sticking to the DOS versions of these games because I'm just more comfortable emulating it, but Bride of the Robot was only released for the Amiga and Atari ST for some reason, so I'm playing the Amiga port. What was that? Music? Yeah, the last two games were entirely silent and an animated logo. This bodes well. We also have a credits list. Wardrobe by Edith Head. Key Grip. You been yurkin' off. Filmed in Spirit Vision by Seymour and Ogle LTD. I may have spoken too soon on the music because it's a single 15 second soundbite used once. Apparently, Miss Galaxy has been kidnapped by a robot built by Dr. Wang. This robot was the first one with a sex drive, and it went berserk, killing him. Now our only lead is Wang's widow, Charlotta Wang. Well, this is a more complex interface than we've seen. This game splits the difference between text commands and point and click in a really weird, confusing way. Certain things can only be interacted with by clicking, and others have to be detailed in the command line. Anyway, we wake up post-orgy on a barren wasteland planet. Perfect spot for group sex. You need to pick up some panties and wear them on your head or you'll die in the atmosphere. Sure. This is a great introduction because on almost every screen, moving in the wrong direction means instant death. Cool. I love it. Trial and error gameplay. At least there's a save button this time to make things a little less painful. You make it through the wasteland back to your ship, where they are STILL getting mileage out of these graphics. There is this lever you can pull which activates the self-destruct on the ship, killing you instantly. Again, these games have no care for making a fun world to be in. In a better game, you'd be able to inspect this and probably be told in narration what it does, because your character, you know, owns this ship. Getting back to the actual game, I make it back to the control panel and punch in Space City, which we were told about in the intro. There's no exploring the city or tracking down Charlotta's apartment. No, you just land right in front. The number is 69, guys. Isn't that funny? That's the sex Isn't that hilarious? Have you heard How of this clever? Sex? What a funny joke. Isn't it's really so funny. and funny? That's the funniest thing I've I seen this I week. Reddit. Inside, we find Lada, already naked and, of course, willing to have sex with you. Fun fact, if you forget to take the panties off of your head, she laughs you out of her apartment. Once you leave, you can't get back in. The game does not let you back in. Alright, whatever. I saved right beforehand, so I'll just load it up. Huh? Oi? This is the beginning of the game, but I, but I saved. Are you telling me that the save button only works once? Yes, that is exactly how it works. You can only save once. And I used mine on the second screen of the game. Get back to the apartment, put a condom on that you picked up at the start, have sex. This is important because if you have sex without a condom, she'll get mad at you and kick you out, soft-locking you. As if the future doesn't have uh, holographic plan B or uh, teleporter abortions. Uh, teleabortions, if you will. Quoting from the guide, 
In an example of the game's poor programming, if you remove S.H.I.E.L.D. after making love, then talk to her, she'll still kick you out. After that, she unlocks the library for you so you can read through her late husband's notes. On the way to the library is the kitchen, however. That's the kitchen from the first game! You gotta eat these beans, because in the next room, there's a carnivorous Venus flytrap that tries to vore you, and the only way to defeat it is to, and this is exact, fart. And like the guide says, if you try and fart without eating the beans first, you won't be able to produce any gas. Be, be honest with me. Does that ass fart? I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't take that long. <laughs> I'm good though, because I read the guide. <laughs> what? What? Huh? What do you mean? I have, I have to start the whole game over again? I ate those beans! I did it! I did this at least three more times! It's just... it's just broken! I'm stuck. I literally can't do anything. I did the one task the game asked of me, and it just doesn't work. What am I even supposed to do? Hey, so... In the previous games, the destinations were either automatic or selected from a list, but in this game, you can just enter them manually, so... If I read ahead in the guide... Uh, let's see, it looks like the clue in the library says that the next planet is... Mamaria? Oh my god. Oh my god, it works. Is this bad design or good design? I, I don't care. I stroll into the robot's lair easily enough and am confronted with three doors. The one in the middle is locked, and despite not being able to enter the other two from the console, you can still click on them to go in? Okay, whatever, let's see what's... Uh... 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 I... Think I... Broke it? Again? Should I just cancel? Oh. I guess that fixed it? Uh, well, this is just a supply closet, and despite the game telling us that there's nothing of use, you actually do need the gloves from here. You can't take them with console commands, you need to click on them. From there, let's go back and check out the other door. Oh, same thing. Uh, yeah, except only a quarter of the graphics load. Now, this wouldn't be so much of a problem, as pretty much everything is done with either text commands or there's a single thing on screen you need to click. Uh, here, however, uh, well, this is what the room is supposed to look like. See these levers? You need to click on them. The red one takes you to the next section. The black one kills you instantly. I didn't even know if I could still click on them if the graphics weren't showing up. Uh, yep. Yep. I could. Okay, back at the lab. I'm not fucking around anymore. We're gonna thread this need What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Use the force, Luke. Let go. I did it! I did it! I clicked the red one in the dark! I am the gamer! Fuck it, I win. I'm the best. I'm the best. Okay, let's just use the guide and finish this. You wander through this ancient Martian desert, meet a woman who wants to have sex with you, of, of course. course. Big thruster, ha, uh, yeah. She gives you a magic stone and you wander the desert a little more until you find a crab. You need the gloves to pick up the crab, then you jump into the time portal that's here, because why not, right? For some reason, this door is now unlocked. Was it the stone? Who cares? We can finally confront the robot. Jesus Christ, you could play horseshoes on that thing. Now you do what any sensible person would think to do, and throw the crab at him, eviscerating his literal junk. By the way, if you didn't get the crab with the gloves, you can't go back to the past again, softlocking you. Whatever, you win, and now you get to have crazy space sex with Miss Galaxy and... Who is this?
I genuinely can't tell. All the women look the same. Oh, Brad. Oh, Brad. Who do you think was the poor woman who had to record that? I'll finish this with a quote from the game's manual. Remember, Brad, it is a dangerous world that you inhabit. This is your most challenging adventure yet. Some things are obvious, and some are not. Your animal cunning and sexual prowess can see you through it as it has before. If you still can't figure it out, hint sheets are available by sending a check for $5 and a self-addressed, stamped envelope to Free Spirit Software. Fuck this game. We are finally at the last game. Sex Olympics. Hmm, well, this is... different. There is an alright looking title screen and three difficulty selections. I want to spend as little time on these games as possible, so let's jump for easy. What is this? Uh, hold on. Wait. No, are, are these... actions? ID card. Is this take? Whoa, 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 whoa. There's a phone, can I... A soft voice says a bizarre... Oh my god, is this just... Is it just a point-and-click adventure game? Oh my god, I can look at the painting. And it, it gives me a clue. I've never been so happy. Sex Olympics takes a complete departure from the previous games by being... Kind of a real game. The first two were railroaded text adventures. The third game awkwardly combined the console with mouse inputs, and this game drops all text commands and is just a straight-up point-and-click adventure. The plot, as described to you in a letter you can read, is kicked off by the Galactic Federation's annual Sex Olympics. While they normally wouldn't ask Brad Stallion to join, Dr. Dildo is competing this year, and they don't want him to win. So basically, you suit up, get in your ship, and travel to any one of about a dozen planets where you can overcome challenges and solve puzzles to bang some photo-scanned hotties. I am aware of the weird implications of a premise where you literally compete over sex with women as points, but, uh... Hey, look, beggars can't be choosers, man. I've suffered enough. Throughout the game, I encountered zero soft locks, glitches, or saving problems. Actually, there is no save system, because I don't even think you can die. Penalties aren't loss of progress, but your opponent being given a chance to make progress while you wait in prison or something. I am shocked at how enjoyable this game is. The structure is so much more interesting and freeing. Most of the planets are only a few screens, if that, but just the fact that you can interact with them does so much, as opposed to just being shuttled from one arbitrary room to the next with instant death or design oversights around every corner. When you get out of your spaceship, you get this little transition. I like that. That's cute. They finally stopped reusing assets for the ship, too. I'm willing to admit that this game might have a lot of trial and error gameplay to find out that you need certain items for certain puzzles. I'm willing to admit that the backgrounds can be laughably cheap looking. It's got its fair share of typos, and there's, like, no music, but honestly, I don't care. We have achieved competence. Even the women look better than previous games. I think they just kind of got, like, one model and sort of styled her differently for the different characters. There's certainly a variety. There's a snow lady, you know, because she's blue. There's a mermaid. There's a... Am I gonna fuck a sheep? This is a certified cake aboki moment. <coughs> no. Good job, game. One of the most challenging planets is Dildo's homeworld, Dildonia, which is... Yeah, that's what it is. This one has probably the most required items to get to the lady because it's literally Dildo's daughter, whom he cannot go for, proving his lack of dedication to the dub. Much like in real life, the secret to victory is just fucking your enemy's daughter. Of all these games, Sex Olympics is easily the best, and the infuriating thing is that it's the only one without any credits. 
I'm serious, I cannot find who made this game. There's even a scrolling credits section on the title screen, but all it lists are the programs they used to make it. I'm genuinely curious as to who worked on it because it feels like it was made by a completely different team. The first three games were written by John R. Olson Jr., who had a pretty lengthy career in game development from the late 70s to early 90s. In fact, his first title was Star Wars for the TRS-80, released in 1978, making it technically the first Star Wars game ever? I'm not even sure that it was official, but hey, who else was making Star Wars games a year after the first movie came out? Around 1998, he seems to have gotten a job with Free Spirit because Brad Stallion was all he made before 1991's I Was a Cannibal for the FBI. He seems to have retired from games after that. After Bride of the Robot, Joe Hubbard would have no credits to his name until... Call of Duty Advanced Warfare? Really? It's hard to track down any information on him, if he's even alive. I wonder if he got out of the game business after Free Spirit didn't go anywhere post-1992. Given that Commodore didn't last through the 90s, maybe that had something to do with it. If we check a two-page promotion they published a little before Sex Olympics release, you can see that they were also in the business of support and utility software for the Amiga. Hang on, is that just a... should you play any of the Brad Stallion games? Uh, the first three, no. Never, please don't. The fourth one? I mean, like, if you feel like it. Well, thank you for indulging me in my descent into madness, only to be plucked from the bottom at the last second. Thanks to Jimfish Odino and Cephicloud77 for providing the walkthroughs. I literally couldn't have done it without you. Uh, I have a Patreon if you want to send me money, and I turned the podcast into a new channel. So, uh, hope you had a great Valentine's Day, and remember, even if you don't have a date, uh, you can just shut yourself in your room all day and sleep through it to, uh, uh, unconscious the sadness away. Bye. Here comes the daredevil! daredevil. So you say, Get, Get over! over.